Hi everybody, this is Katisha and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Kitty Crow Creations. Today we're going to continue our dog series by painting Cutie Pie. He is a French Bulldog and um, another name for French Bulldog is Frenchie. So this is a French, we're going to be painting a Frenchie today and this is Cutie Pie. And it's a continuation, like I said, of our dog, dog series that we started last week when we painted uh, Buddy and Chloe. If you have not had a chance to hit the subscription button, please feel free to do so. That way you um, can be part of the team and make sure you hit the notification button so that way if you want to be notified about future tutorials, you'll be in the loop of things. And if you found the tutorial helpful, at the end, please feel free to hit that like button. Today I have with me once again, manning the cameras, my niece Octavia. Hello everyone. So Octavia, uh, is she makes sure the videos are filmed properly and also helps with the audio and helps to make a awesome tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to talk a little bit about our, our materials. We are going to be painting today on an 11 by 14 canvas. and. As far as paint brushes, if you notice, I kind of use the same paint brushes all the time. I usually will start off with the background using my one inch Simply Simmons bright brush. So I'm going to use that. I also have a um, half inch bright brush, a number six round brush. I have my, additionally, I have my liner brush. And it's possible that I might be using my, um, my angle brush. This is a half inch angle brush. So those are the main, one, main ones I'm gonna use. But as I said before, do not feel intimidated and overwhelmed by the type of brushes you use. This is just a suggestion. If there's brushes you feel more comfortable with, feel please feel free to use them. But make sure you get a brush that really allows the, um, the, the paint to go onto the canvas. I know if you're painting and you're struggling to get the paint onto the canvas and you're using actually using a lot of paint, you probably don't have the right brush with the right bristles. And I believe this is um, synthetic bristles that are very helpful. Okay, also we're gonna be using painter's tape. I When I transfer all my images, I use Sorel transfer paper, so make sure you always have some of that handy. And let's go ahead and get started. To, to, paint, to paint our background, the first thing we're gonna do today is we're gonna use these colors. We're gonna um, use phthalo blue, burnt umber, cad red medium, titanium white, and ultramarine blue. So let's go ahead and get started. We wanna uh, get our paintbrush a little bit wet to loosen up the fibers. And then what I'm going to do, I had been talking to you about the fact of, of your canvas, how best to get the paint on there where you're not struggling to like use up all your paint to get the paint on there. You can use a little spritzer bottle or you can use a, um, put a couple uh, coats of gesso on here. But today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to wet our brush and then we're going to just wipe off a little water and we're going to go through, we're going to kind of dampen our canvas. And by dampening our canvas, it'll help us get that paint on there a little bit better. So let's just go ahead and do that right now. I'm really excited about this series, um, learning about, it's been a very educational for me because I'm not a dog guru, so I don't know a lot of information about dogs, but as I'm going on you know, this journey of doing this dog series, I'm learning a lot about dogs. And when I was doing the research on the the Frenchie, I found some very interesting facts and we'll talk about that throughout the, the uh, video. So when we do our dog series, in addition to showing you how to paint it, I'd like to give you a little bit of fun facts about each dog that we're going to be painting. Okay, so I got that a little bit wet, so I'm going to go ahead and mix my colors. I've got some phthalo blue, some ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and cad red medium. And the reason I put the burnt umber in the cad red medium is to gray this back a little bit because I don't want it to be too overpowering. And so if you can see in the, the picture I have here, 
I'm going to start off with a light, lighter um, uh, version of the color at the top and a darker version at the bottom. And keep in mind, you can use whatever background you want to use. You don't have to use the background that I'm using. I'm going to put a little more burnt umber in there. Maybe a little bit more cad red. Okay, so we're gonna, this is gonna be our light version over here. So we're gonna start by putting that on. I think I wanna make it a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna put some more titanium white. And I'm just gonna go through, and I'm just kinda in a crisscross motion. And like I said, you can use any background you want doesn't have to be this color. I know that using a burnt umber, yellow ochre, dioxazine purple, ultramarine blue mixture or combination really gives a really awesome background. And you always want to, if you can, try to have a background for your, for your paintings. It, it really helps you with painting your, your subject on there a little bit easier. So you can see even with putting that water on there, still, still wants to struggle to get that paint on there. And don't forget to paint your sides. Okay, now I'm gonna, I have my light color at the top. I'm just gonna come through and start using my darker color. I'm just gonna start putting it in there. And then I wanna lightly blend over top of it so it, it, it won't look like there's a harsh line and it'll look more like it's a gradation of moving from light to dark. And right away I can see that I need more paint. So I'm going to get some more Thalo Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Burn Umber, Cad Red Medium. And then go start putting that paint on there. I really love that color. And like, and you know, if you have to get a little water, get a little bit more water, and that's fine. I know there's a, a debate as to whether if you're painting acrylics, if you should use water because this is not watercolor, but you know, use what you have to do to get the job done. You just want a very rich, vibrant, beautiful painting in the, in the end. That's your, that's your ultimate goal. And I just thought it was so fun to do cutie pie with this, this blue background. I just loved it. So I'm trying to lightly blend those colors together. I'm just barely scraping across the top with my brush. And this is something to think about if you're going to be painting like me. I'm, this is not obviously an ocean scene, but that's something you can think about if you want to do an ocean scene, how you can make it look dark at the top, the bottom and light at the top. So, Tavi, do you have any fun facts about the, um, about cutie pie? about the uh, Frenchy Bulldogs? They are really popular dogs and very expensive. Yes, they are. They're real popular and very expensive. And there's a reason for that. You know, upon doing research, we found out that, you know, the the Frenchy the Frenchy Bulldog is really really it's a really cute dog as you know as you can see in the painting that we're going to be doing, but he, the you know the dogs also have some serious health you know issues, and it takes a lot to you can see I'm struggling to put that paint on there I'm just going to mix some more. So I got my Thalo Ultramarine, Burn Umber, and Cat Red Medium. Put a little bit of that 
more of that in there. And just finished painting this out. I saw this one painting of these um, two dogs. I think they're Labrador Retrievers. And they were on a back, they had a background like this. And oh my goodness, the painting was so beautiful just because of the background. Okay, so we got our background. Just gonna blend this out a little bit. And I'm gonna clean out my brush and then I'm going to blow dry it. So we're gonna blow dry it and we're gonna transfer on the image. So as I'm blow drying, Octavia's probably going to, Octavia has a lot of knowledge about these, these uh, Frenchies. She's going to be giving you a little bit of facts while I blow dry my background. So let me go ahead and get started with my background, blow my background. some facts about the um, Frenchie. In addition, like Octavio, Octavio was saying earlier is that they're really popular dogs and some people who actually um, own a Frenchie, there's Dwayne Johnson, there's Lady Gaga, and I forget who else there is. Um, there's quite a few people. There's also Reese Witherspoon and Madonna. Even Hugh Jackman has a Frenchie. And like I said, they're, they're kind of expensive. The reason why they're expensive is that what I found out that Frenchies, they have a hard time because of they, they're suffering from what's called you know dwarfism. And because they suffer from dwarfism and they have the big head and certain other structures of their body, they have a hard time with childbirth. And usually when they have child, you know, when they are ready to conceive their offspring, they have to actually have a cesarean. So that it's, very rare that they have their um, offspring through natural birth. So having a cesarean can be costly. But so cute though. Look how cute it is. Okay, let's go ahead and we got our background. Let's go ahead and put our uh, transfer on our image. So the image and the, the, um, the traceable is on my Pinterest page. Like I said, once my website is up and running, I will notify you about that and you'll have a easier access to find all the resources and the materials you, you want in one place. This painting is based on this photo. As you can see, I've changed it completely. And I, I did this on purpose to show you that a reference photo is just that, it's a reference. It gives you a guide as to maybe some ideas, how the structures of your subject should be. And so I just used it because I wanted to see what a Frenchie looked like, but I completely changed my background because I wanted the focal point to be cutie pie and not all of the extra that was in the background. Now, if you want to do like the leaves and the grass, that's fine. But in my case, I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to focus on Frenchie, I mean, uh, cutie pie. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer my image. I'm going to put it here. And I want to kind of over to the side. You notice my painting is over to the side because I'm trying to follow the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds says when you have your subject in the uh, third quadrant, it makes it more appealing. Like, so that's why you see a lot of paintings are kind of off centered. Very rarely do you see a lot of paintings where the subject is right in the middle for that reason. 
It's always more appealing when something is off to the side. So, what's another interesting fact about the, the Frenchies? Well, since we're painting a black and white Frenchie, Yay, you guys should black know that those are the actual most common colored Frenchies out there. Black and white. That's very interesting. Let me see if that's gonna... Just testing it out to make sure you have the right side down. Yeah, I do. Okay. Now, this Sorel transfer uh, paper, you can, I ordered mine from Amazon. There might be another place where you can order, but that's where I get mine. And you can also get it by the roll, which that's something I'm going to consider investing in. Now, this particular image, you know, try to get as much detail on here that's going to help you out. If you don't need to trace a lot of detail, then do not trace a lot of detail. I like to get a lot of detail just for references, reference purposes so I can know where things should be. But then I, more than likely as I'm painting, I'll go through and I'll probably change quite a few things. And I know a lot of people are probably wondering, why does she use transfer paper? Why does she doesn't freehand anything? Well, the point of the tutorial is to teach you how to paint. So when we do a lesson, and I keep saying this, when we do a lesson on how to draw, then I will show you how to draw it. And I really want to make sure I get Cutie Pie's eyes just right if I can. Okay, so we got that. So we're going to come over here. What I found fascinating about the history of the uh, French Bulldog or the Frenchie is the fact that they didn't even they didn't originate in France. They originated in England. And apparently, what happened is that there were um, they were called lace workers in England, who they really liked this dog because it was so little and cute and cuddly. And what happened when they needed to um, immigrate to to France they took the dogs with them and started breeding them in, over in France and that's probably where they got the idea of the Frenchie okay we're almost done transferring I just need to move it over some now as I always say the goal is to try to make this painting in under two hours but the more detailed your paintings are everyone you're just gonna have to understand that it takes more time okay that's I think I'm gonna just put one more little thing on here hold on just, just a second oh that's not gonna work if I put the transfer paper on top it's not gonna work <laughs> I have to put it underneath <laughs> Let me make sure I have that right. Perfect. Well, I think I got enough of information that I need. I sure do. So, cutie pie is all ready. I'm going to put the transfer paper there. And I'm always recycling my tape. I don't really throw it away because it's painter's tape and you can use it over and over. And the goal is just to hold everything in place anyway. So we'll keep using it. Okay, let's talk about a couple of things before I start painting. All right. Here is Cutie Pie, the original uh, photo reference. And you know, you need to realize that um, dogs, animals, humans, whatever, they have layers upon layers. We keep talking about that. So you need to look at this painting and ask yourself, what is the darkest color that I see? And that's what you want to start with and start building up. Okay. So what we're going to do first is this, we're going to start off with the body, just the body that's white. And as you can see, there's, there's some, um, there's kind of like, like a grayish color with a little bit of like maybe yellow ochre. What we're going to do is that we're going to paint the, uh, the undercoat this color because this is really the color underneath then we're gonna we're gonna come across and then we're gonna put white over top of it 
a little like a lighter version of the white because you don't want to start with white because white is your biggest it's your it's your greatest highlight then we're going to put then we'll put some some more white on top of that and then we'll put we'll kind of like blend in some of this dark color over here it's more white because it's facing the light and over here it's a little bit darker and as you can see i you can see in my photo some of the things i did is like real white right here but then it's shadow and then some red over here so we're gonna go ahead and get started with that okay so i am switching now to my um, half inch flat brush which we're going to be using for most of this and um i'm gonna get you know what? i'm gonna show you something really fast i forgot to I forgot to draw the rest of the face, so I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix that using my um, watercolor pencils. Um, let me see if I can find a light color. Let's start with this to use this yellow. Okay. I need to finish this part over here of his mouth. Well, actually, I haven't decided if I want to call it a she or a he. And the reason I'm using a, a, a watercolor pencil is that watercolors, they blend right into the, um, right into the image when you're painting. See, I didn't have the little mouth right there, so I just went back and added it. And I'm gonna add a division right here and have this come all the way down. So I finished it with a watercolor pencil. Perfect. Right. So first things first, let's go ahead and get this background in. We're going to use some Mars Black, so I'm going to put on some Mars Black. Sometimes these things are hard to open. And I try to put my paint colors to the side so I can have all the inner part for my, uh, my area to mix colors. So I'm going to get some Mars Black. Ultramarine Blue and Burnt Umber. And I already have burnt umber and ultramarine blue on here, but I'm going to put a little bit more burnt umber because we're going to be using a lot of that today. Now, as far as paints, I usually use golden. Golden and Matisse are my favorite, but you can use any, uh, any type of paint that you need to get the job done. If you use um, student, student level paints, which are usually the level, I think the level one paints, if I'm correct. You just, just know that you're gonna have to paint twice because it's gonna take that much paint to get it onto your canvas. But I'm using professional levels so it doesn't take as many coats. So I've got my Mars Black. So I'm getting ready to make, I'm gonna dip my paintbrush into my water. And I have two jars of water because when your paint starts, your water starts getting dirty, you don't want to, and you need to mix some light colors, you don't want to dip it in the, the dark, dirty water. So I'm going to get some Mars Black and some Ultramarine Blue and mix that together and put a little Burn Umber to give it a brown tint. What, what it is is that Mars Black and Ultramarine Blue, they make paints gray. And so this is a rich, rich, dark, um, dark brown color. I'm just going to put a little bit of, a, just a little bit of titanium white because I don't want it that dark yet. I do want it that dark up here but not down here so I'm just going to go through and add the color. And this is just the first coat. You want to get that paint all on there. And also you want to go, the, the fur is kind of going like this. It's kind of going in that direction. So we're going to try to, we're going to try to keep it in the direction of the fur. Now you're probably saying, what fur? I don't see any fur. It's there. You can kind of barely see it, but it's there. So 
of this and just coming and putting all that in here. The base coat for the white. I'm going to come over and put some over here too. I'm, I'm keeping my outlines just for the moment to make sure I'm getting everything where it needs to be and I'll go back and paint over top of them later. So that's the dark color. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna come and put some, some white over top of that. I'm trying to go in the direction of the fur. And as you can see, it's not gonna give me a, a white, white color, and that's okay, because that's the whole point. Because I don't want white, white, white yet. I'm just doing my base coat. And I like that, you know, try to put some of the paint on there while it's still a little wet. It helps with the blending effect. Looks really nice. Now I know I said that I'm trying to put it on here to, so you can see the fur, but really with the, these dogs, these bulldogs, the, the Frenchie bulldogs, and even like last week when I did Chloe and um, Buddy, the pit bulls, their fur is so short that it looks like skin. The fur down here is kind of going down in this direction. Okay, don't panic. Don't 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 worry about it. I mean, it, it might not look like a dog right now, but I assure you it will. And then the fur on this one is kind of going up and down. In a sense, I'm just kind of dry brushing it in. And if some of you had a chance to do my see, I don't want it to be white white yet, so I'm gonna come put some more dark in there. If some of you had a chance to write, watch my painting about the puppy and Rose, how we, I think we did, that painting, it took us quite a few layers. I think it took us, I think we did it in four layers. But the end result was beautiful. All right. So while that dries, we're going to move to the eyes. Now, for the eye, I'm going to rinse out my brush. I just want to do my eyes so you can see where we are. Now, for the eyes, I'm going to start with the, I'm not going to start with the, I'm not going to start with the, um, I don't even have the people in here yet. I'm not going to start with the iris. I'm just going to paint in all of uh, all of the I'm gonna paint the scalera and I'm also gonna so this it's gonna be like a, a like a a pink base so I'm gonna start off with some cad red and I'm also gonna start if you see me looking down at my paper I usually like to have notes and you know and that's okay because what if you want to do this painting again later and you can't remember what colors you mix so it's good to have your notes so I'm going to use CAD Red. I'm going to use I use my um, my ultra. I mean, not ultramarine blue. Today is not going to be an ultramarine blue day, but that was titanium white. Now I'm going to put some some burn umber. The reason why I say that it's kind of like an inside joke. Our last video when we were taping Chloe and Buddy, every color I picked up was ultramarine blue. I had ultramarine blue on the mine, so that was that was kind of funny. So I'm going to put a little bit more ultramarine blue in there. I'm going to put more white. Because it, when you look at your eyes, the sclera, sclera is not white. 
it has some kind of other color in there and then you use the white for highlights so that's why this is the color that I'm coming up with so I'm just going to go in here and color that and you'll see how it'll come together later Another inter interesting fact about these dogs is that they're considered lap dogs, which I can see why that would be the case because they're so cute, cute and cuddly. Now keep in mind, I'm not a, a dog expert, so I just want to establish that fact right now. I'm just trying to provide a little bit of information while we're doing this fun painting. All right, so that we have that color out the way and I'm gonna take some of that color, I'm gonna put it over here because on the back of its, uh, top of its hind leg, it's a little bit pink. So I'm just gonna dry brush that in there. All right, so we got that. Okay, now what we're gonna do you know what, I'm going to go back and I'm going to put some more of this, um, the white, the same thing that I did down here to the body, I'm going to do on the inside of it, of its muzzle. So let me do that right now. I'm going to mix some more um, Mars Black, Ultramarine Blue, and some Burn Umber. Which this mixture I'm gonna need anyway when I do all the, you know, just let me go ahead and put it in here. Let me put it in here. Cause that's really what this dark color is here. And then I'll come and I'll put the muzzle. Cause all it is is that the, um, the dark color is used to paint this part. And then we just add a little white to, to get this part here and to get that. So I'm just going and doing my large shapes and then we'll put the details. I'd probably say in about, a, um, I don't know, like maybe two months, maybe three months, we're going to uh, be doing a landscape series where I'll be teaching you how to do landscapes, which that's going to be a lot of fun. And see, he's starting to come to life. Okay, as you can see, I'm going to get more paint. When I run out of paint, I just go get some more. And I don't have a problem with that because I don't want to be struggling to try to get paint on here. So I just mix up some more paint. Just gonna paint that all in and then we'll come back and put the details later. I really, I really hope you, you know, with all this going on right now, you know, there's a lot going on in our society. I really ha hope you have a chance to paint because painting is so therapeutic and it takes you, your mind to a place of peace and solitude, you know, and I, I just think it's, it's a great creative outlet. So if you can, give it a try. You won't regret it. So we got that. And you know, while I still have this on here and why it's still dark, and wet. We're going to go ahead and try to start putting some highlights in here for the ear. I'm going to take out my unbleached titanium. Just putting a little bit because I don't think we need that much. So I'm putting my unbleached titanium. I'm just going to get a little bit and I'm just going to come here and try to make the, the curve of the ears, the inner part of the ear. Make it a little bit more highlighted. We'll come back and add more color to it later, but I just 
want to be able to make it look blended. I'm going to wipe some of that off on my, my towel and just blend it in. And if I want it to be a more pronounced line, I can come back in a minute and, you know, and do that or just do it later. I just wanted to get that in there. Same about this side over here. Put a little bit. And as you can see, he's, I haven't decided if I want it to be a girl or a boy. You know, I need to do research to determine what are some key factors that distinguish the Frenchies, the girl from the, the male from the female. That's something that I didn't get a chance to, to research. But regardless, they're super cute. Okay, so now um, the inside of his ear, whatever was around this particular Frenchie, there had to be some red in the background because as you can see this ear, I just didn't randomly put that red and I didn't randomly put the pink over here. Whatever's in the background, it, I'm sure it's because of the flowers. As you can see here, the flowers, it has to be red right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get some, some cad red and start putting that on there, like in the inner part of the ear while it's still wet and we can blend it. But I'm gonna introduce cad yellow and we're gonna make like an, orange, uh, an orangey color to highlight it. So I'm gonna put that right there. So I'm gonna mix my cad red with my cad yellow. I'm just gonna put a little bit of white. A little bit more. And that's kinda of gonna be like a highlight color for that. We might have to wait until it dries. I might just do that, just wait until it dries. Rinsing off my brush. Let me see if I can get some more of that cat red over top of that. Yeah, I'll just come back to this later because it needs to be more vibrant than, than that inside the ear. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this part right here to match what we have on the rest of the body. So that was our um, Mars Black. It was an ultramarine blue, burn umber, and then we added a little white to that. And this is going to be. Oh, we need a little bit more white. There we go. Just want it to be a little. We don't want to. We don't want to put. Like I said, we don't want to put white on it there yet. We just want to get the base coat. And Cutie Pie's nose is kind of interesting. It has spots all over it. He has a really cute nose. And I'm just gonna outline the nose and we'll come get the details in a minute. Okay, so I've got that. I like the way that white is kind of showing up. but we're not even close to being finished with this one, this area. But just to kind of like, you know, if you ever get a chance, do, do research on how to paint undertones. And then it'll explain more why we, why it, it, it takes an artist so long to get 
the colors established on something. Like if I wanted to, I could just put white and then I just could have put like a dark color right there and just put that, you know, the, just put one layer of paint. But if you do that, like I said, it's not, I'm just going to put some more of that color. I want to put some more of that color down there because I really like it. But if you do that, it's not, your painting is not going to have depth. I'm just going to use some of that since I still have some. And then we'll do the nose, work on the eye, and then come back and put some more of that, put some of the white where it needs to go. Cutie pie is starting to come together, huh, Octavia? Coming all together. It's amazing how you can start off with something and say, mm, that don't look right. But then eventually it starts looking right. I can't, I can't explain it. So I'm going to get that pink and mix it in with, with this mixture so we can blend them together. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to switch back to my, um, I'm going to switch to my, I think this is my number six round brush and I'm going to come in and I'm going to do Cutie Pie's nose. I'm just, for, for his nose, really it should be this color, but I'm just going to, actually let me do that. I'm going to use my mixture of, let's start, no, let's start with um, black. We'll just start with black. Because technically when you're painting acrylics, you're supposed to always start with your darkest color first. And since Cutie Pie has some grays and things uh, on top of his nose, we need to start with the darkest color, which in this case would be black. So, um, a fact, do we have another fact about the, um, about the dogs, uh, Tavia, regard, in regards to their nostrils? I think there was a fact about the, um, their nostrils about over time, how when they were breeding them, their nostrils um, became more closed where in the past, like when the, the, the origination of the, the French Bulldog, their, their nostrils are a little bit more open. So just this, there's a reason why, you know, through breeding and things like, and so forth, the, the, the uh, French Bulldog's history the French bull, bull, Bulldog's um, medical history or health history is very fascinating. So I'm good. Okay, pie. Yes, they do have problems with breathing because their nostrils are so small. Mm -hmm. and they also have problems with birth. Yep. Who would ever thought that? Something so cute that would have so many difficulties. That's unfortunate. But they're still cute. Okay, so at least we have we have now we have um, the nose. So what I would like to do right now is I want to come back and work on this part of the fur. So we're going to go back and add some white, and I'm going to switch back to my half inch brush. Okay, I'm just going to pick up some straight white and um, that had some red in it so let me get that out of there. That's okay. So I'm going around. So I'm just adding pure titanium white and you think I would be trying to add like fur to it like little like you know little uh, implications of fur but if you look at you look at them it's just really like I said like the pit bulls that we did it's almost just like skin very fine skin they actually do not shed oh see and they don't see so we're, we're, we're trying to like really pump up these dogs. I mean, we're not spokespeople for Frenchies, but those are some good, some good um, selling factors for you to all consider if you're looking for a dog. I mean, they don't shed and they're so cute and cuddly and they're loyal. They make per perfect um, family dogs. So that's good. No shedding. You can't beat that. 
So it's the hair the fur kind of goes this way, but then when it gets down here it goes it goes downward. So that's why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. And I'm picking up these extra colors that that were in my paint, which is not bad because underneath here the fur is not really white anyway. It's got it's got reflections in it. And that's what I want. But I do want to get more white up here because this is where the highlight is. Oh, but just think. Big, strong... Um, Dwayne Johnson and I, and I don't know Dwayne Johnson personally I wish I did but um you know based on some research that we did that, that I find that interesting that him and Hugh Jackman have this dog as a pet okay so what I'm going to do now to show my my shadows and my highlights I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put some of that um this undercoating uh, the underpainting color inside the fur what's well, still wet and I'm going to blend it in let me go this way because it's the direction of the fur. And as you can see, just by doing that, it's making the fur become, it look more realistic. And I'm, I'm always fascinated with painting and how you can make something, you could try to make something look real on canvas. That's a challenge within itself and usually a lot of fun. I personally like it. And all I'm doing is kind of dry brushing it on there. I don't want a whole bunch of paint. I just want to dry brush it. Because this dry brushing effect and putting the shadows in here is what's going to make this look more real and appealing. I'll put some more over here because all this over here is shadow. Okay, so as you can see right now, it's starting to look like look like fur because we put the shadows in there. And I failed to put a little bit of the white under here, so I'm going to go ahead and do it right under here. Should be more white. Trying to see here. That's right. Okay. I'm going to dry brush that on there. Okay. And we'll come back and fix that in a minute. Okay, I'm going to come put my white over here. And I'm going to go up and down because that's the direction of the fur. Make sure I have some paint on that brush. So, you know, if you have a particular dog and um, you're interested in us, you know, me painting, feel free to put it in the comments section. I would like to know what you're thinking, what your interests are. Tavi and I, we have some ideas in mind, but we'd also like to know which, what, what your interests are as well. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to come and put some of this um, pink mixture that I used in the eyes. I'm going to dry brush it onto to the, the white over here. Take a 
take off some of my paint put some more of it down here I'm gonna come back later and put some more white over there and then probably some more white over here just to make it so you can see the highlight where the highlights are falling so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and start working on these eyes actually let's come up here I'm sorry let me since I have white on my, my paintbrush I'm trying to do things in sections and try to show you how to do it in sections because it can be kind of kind of overwhelming when you're doing this so I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna start putting in some of this white trying to go in the direction of the fur because it's kind of going like this and this down here is white also gonna put some gray around his um, around his nose because that's part of his little spots and his features but like like uh, Octavia was saying that the um, the black and white is the most popular dog and I think it's part of the um, the Frenchy poodle called the pied French uh, Frenchy bulldog there's like three different types with their, uh, based on their, their colors of the, the, the Frenchies. So Cutie Pie has a lot of that pink around its muzzle, so I'm just going to put some in here. And I'll go back and put some more black over there. And he has some right here. I'm just dry brushing it on here and then he has some right here take off some of my paint I'm gonna dry brush that okay cutie pie also has some of that dark mixture the um, underpainting color that we use and so I'm going to dry brush some of that right over here I might come back and put another layer but right now that's what we're that's what we got okay we're going to put some continue with our white up here And I'm, I'm not really worried about so much having my brush completely cleaned when I'm putting on the white because I'm going to come back and add some white highlights anyway. So this, trying to go the direction of Cutie Pie's fur up here. up here we'll get back to that later okay so now we're gonna do the eyes and once we do the eyes it'll it'll kind of make sense the eyes are kind of tricky cutie pies are actually not cutie pies I have cutie pie on the mind um, Frenchies they have if you look at their eyes their eyes are really beautiful they have like automatic eyelashes and it look like that they, they have eyeliner it's so interesting so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get my my round brush and I am going to mix it is first it's, it's the combination of our underpainting color which is it's the Mars black ultramarine blue burn umber That's going to be the start of the um, 
the iris. So let's go ahead and get that started. That's going to be the underpainting of the iris. I can try to make the circle as perfectly as I can make it. I'm just going to go ahead and get that painted in there. being not afraid to use some paint. Okay, because this side over here is in shadow, you're, you, all you're basically gonna see is the underpainting of the eye. So let's go ahead and get that put in. So that's going to do for this one for right now because there's not much going on. Okay. Now while that's still wet, this particular iris, it has like green and it has some some yellow ochre in there and some and some um some unbleached titanium. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix the color for the eyes. It's cad yellow, cad red. Let me get my yellow ochre out because I don't have that out yet. It's my yellow ochre. I'm going to put a little yellow ochre in there. I'm looking for a green color. Oh yeah, and I also need some ultra, ultramarine blue, obviously, because yellow and blue make green. And it's almost like a, a orangey, greenish looking color. That's the inside of the eyes. That's what I'm shooting for. I'm put a little bit of, a little bit of white. I think I want to put a little bit more ultra ultramarine blue because I want it to look more green. It's almost like a muddy green. So I'm going to go in here and start, you know, just a little bit more. Make it a little more, a little more green. So I'm going to go in here and start putting it in. And you're probably thinking, well, if you're going to make this color green, why did you put the underpainting for that reason? So this will stick out a little bit better. And you see how it has uh, a little bit more depth since we started off with the, the base color at the bottom. And Cutie Pie has some highlights around the edge. So I'm going to put a little bit of unbleached titanium around this part to give a sense of a highlight. Wiping off some of my paint. Well, actually, let me rinse it off. And then I blend it in. I want to dry brush that in. Put a little bit more for some more highlight. And then later I'll come put white to make it really stand out. And I'm getting ready to put the, the pupil in there. Okay, so now I'm going to put the pupil. That's just plain Mars black. So let me go ahead and put it in there.
might have to come and get an, get it, give it another coat because it's the paints, uh, the colors underneath are probably not dry enough. And Cutie Pie's eyes are coming together. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to outline the iris because Cutie Pie has a really thick outline around his eye, around his iris of his eye. So we got that. We're gonna let that dry a little bit and we'll come back and put the highlight. But what I would like to do is to put some of this, this color, the undercoat painting inside of his eye because, but with a little bit more burnt umber in it. Because he has a lot of this dark color in the inside of his eye. And then I'm gonna to try to dry brush it in there so it won't look so you won't have those fine um, detailed lines. And you'll see in a minute how it's gonna come together. And then I'm gonna show you how to put a glaze over top of his eye. Because you need to understand that your eyes have shadows over top of the, um, the pupil because it's the shadow from the eyelid. And I'll show you that in just a sec. I'm just blending this in, this dark color. Just kind of dry brushing it in there. So this is what we're going to do. To give the shadow, I'm going to get some of my, it's my acrylic glazing. It's called ac acrylic glazing liquid. It, what it does, it allows you to do just that. Create a glaze or gloss over top of something so it's, it's a little bit more transparent. So I'm going to take some black, some Mars black, and I'm going to put some glazing liquid over top of it. Get as much as glazing liquid as I can because we just want to create a glaze. And then we're going to go over top of the eye to give a shadow effect. I might have to come back later when this is a little bit drier. But I don't know if you can see it. You can see it's creating a glaze. And in the, the process of doing that, it's also creating the shadow. Without taking away the features of the eye. I just think that's so cool. Go back and put some highlights back into the eye. And we're going to use white. A little bit of white. A little white right there. I'm just barely putting a little bit and put a little bit over here. Definitely some down here. I'm going to try to br dry brush it in there. Yep, try brushed it. And doesn't the eye look more realistic when you put the the, um, the highlights in there and the shadows? That's really that's really what gives your 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 paintings dimension is when you have those highlights and those shadows. Okay, so now we're going to come on and put some some highlights over here in this eye. I'm going to go back over it again with that same base color. And then I'm going to put a highlight over in the corner because that's all that you have. You have a highlight over top of the um, of the iris, and then you have a little bit of highlight inside this sclera. I put that little bit, and then I'm going to get my pink mixture just to dampen it up a little bit, and I'm going to add some white to it. a little bit of white in here. And 
and then I'm going to go back and dry brush it in a little bit more. But I said it once, I'll say it again. If you are painting something and you cannot distinguish your lights from your darks, that means you're missing either a highlight or you're missing, um, miss, missing a dark color. Okay, I'm going to come back over here to my first eye and I'm going to go and outline it with black because Cutie Pie has eyelashes. So I'm just putting a little and put some down here. And you can barely see it, but that's okay. I'm just going to put a little tiny white over top of that so you can so you can actually see it. You see what happened when I put the white over there? You can actually see what it was that I was doing. Which just proves what I just said. If you're putting something and you can't see it, then you need to put, you need to put some either a, a, a light or a dark. Can't really see your eyelashes, so I'm just going to put a little bit more white in there so you can see it. Okay. Probably a little bit more light in here. I'm not trying to make it too overpowering either. I'm going to put a little bit over here and the eyelashes kind of come downward and they, they come out this way. So they're, they're flicking out that way, the eyelashes. I don't know, so maybe we should call it Cutie Pie. I wonder if that's a distinguishing feature of the, the Frenchies to help you determine which one is male and female. I don't know. I can research that and we can find out. It looks so cute. Can I outline this too? This, the skull, the um, iris, and put some more highlights, and then we're done with the eyes. That wasn't too bad, was it, for the eyes? That glazing liquid is a great help. It really, really is. I'm gonna put a little bit of a highlight right here. So you can see it there. I want to make this a little bit more pronounced. So I'm going to make that a little bit like that one. There we go. Okay. So let's get some detail to the nose. I am going to get some of my uh, undercoat. Uh, the color that I use for, for the uh, underpainting, I'm going to take some of that, put a little white in it to make like a grayish color. I might, I might, I don't know, I might use some more of it. I don't want it that, I don't want it that light. So I'll use this, I'll just use this color. See how it's lighter than the rest of this? I want to use that to come around here. That's too much paint. I don't want to use that much paint. Because all around Cutie Pie's nose is like this, um, these spots. And I think that's really cute. That's the distinguishing feature of Cutie Pie. So I'm just going to go ahead and make that. Kind of dry brushing it on there. There's little details like this that really gives your dog's character. Okay, so also Cutie Pie in his, his nose, he has a lot of spots. So we're gonna give him some spots. Let me, I just wanna dry brush this part in cause I don't want any, I don't like those harsh lines. So I try to take off some of my paint, come back and dry brush it on here. Uh, 
Okay, so you can tell I'm an artist. Artist. Okay, I'm sorry. I need to come back up here because this is bugging me. I want to put some more white because I felt that that eye wasn't showing up the way I wanted it to. So I just went and put some more highlight on it. Okay. Also on Cutie Pie's nose, I'm going to mix some more of this mixture. I'm going to get some Cad Red, Ultramarine Blue, Burn Umber, Might be a little bit too much spread number. Some white. I'm gonna put some more. Um, I don't need titanium. I need some more ultramarine blue. Some more red. Because I want that grayish, pinkish looking color. Put a little bit more of that white. And just a little bit more burn, burn number. There we go. Rinsing off my brush because I don't want a whole bunch of paint on my brush. But I will say, I think I want a little bit more white. And we'll put it over here on the side like that. And it's for Cutie Pie's little spots. Take off some of that paint. Cutie Pie has some spots right here. Some right here, some up here. One right here around the nostrils. Some right here. some right here. Cutie Pie has them in very different places. Now if I really want that to stick out, I'm going to come and put some white over top of that. I didn't start off with white because as I said, white, you always you don't want to start off with white first. White is your last resort. I'm gonna finish. We got a little water right there that come right off there. Okay, I want to fix his nose. We're losing his nose, so let me come in and fix it. And it kind of comes in here like that. I'm going to get a little white to outline it so we can really see it. Okay. All right. He's turned out to be super cute. Okay. All right. So I'm going to, I need to get some more Mars Black. We're almost done, everybody. Can you believe it? We just got a couple more things to do, and we will be finished with Cutie Pie. Just need some Mars Black. Because I need to make some more of that underpainting color. So I'm going to get my Mars Black, Ultramarine Blue. I don't know if I told you this, but Mars Black and Ultramarine Blue, they make, they make paints gray. So that's why when we put the white in it, it looks gray. And I just put a little bit of the burnt umber because I want it to have a brown tint or a warm tint to it. Okay. Okay, that's for my light, my shadows when I need it. Now I'm going to make some more because I need to make his uh, bottom mouth. So I'm going to mix a little bit more. 
my ultramarine blue. I know my paint palette is a, and, and by the way, this paint palette is a, a by Strathmore, and it's a, um, it's a 12 by 16 um, uh, palette, and I like this paper palette because when you're done, you can just throw it away. So we need to get his mouth in order here, or his muzzle. Okay, see, I'm, I need more brown. And while I have that, I'm just going to go ahead and put a couple little indentations of for his whiskers while we're here. Might as well just go ahead and do it. Put some over here too. Okay, so much for that. And also, we're going to take some of this pink mixture we had, and we're going to come and try to put just a few little, I won't actually want more white. I don't want all that pink. Clean off my brush. I'm sure there's artists out there who don't rinse their brush as much as I do, but I like to rinse my brush, so. So I'm just gonna come put a few little dots because Cutie Pie has some little dots. I'm just using the tip of my round brush. I don't want them too big. It's just that he has spots and I just want you to be able to see them. I guess you can call it, I don't know if these are supposed to be his freckles or what they're supposed to be, but he has quite a few of them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some more highlight right here on, I'm going to put some more white right here on the uh, body and then I'm going to come up here and start working on the fur of the, of the, the head and then put some whiskers and we will actually be done. Can't believe it. Can you believe Tavia we're almost going to be done? I can't believe it, but I can. <laughs> Cause our last painting, it took us a little bit of time. Let me see. Let's see, I don't want that my white paint got contaminated and I'm, I'm at the point where I'm putting highlights so it, ha it needs to be pure titanium white so I'm just going to get some, some a fresh um, mound of white. Alright so I'm going to put some white right here because this is the side that's, that was facing the sun in the reference photo and it's pure white. If I lose my gray color, that's okay. I just come back and add some more. What I mean by gray, I mean my, my shadow colors. And it's kind of sometimes hard to go in the direction of the fur when really technically there is no fur. But you see how the painting has more depth? The more that you add to it, I don't know if you had a chance to notice that, but it really does. So I'm probably going to go right back over top of that and that's okay. Gives me a chance to refine that. And I know you're probably thinking, I'm a beginner, I can't do this. I'm like, actually you can. I remember when I was a beginning painter and um, the one thing you have to do is you have to always challenge yourself. And Tavi, Octavia and I, we talked about this last time in our last um, tutorial that you could, you really have to challenge yourself and it's through those challenges that you grow. Okay. But I don't know if you can see that it has more depth. That's like the third layer of painting. So now I'm going to get some of this, this mixture I had made earlier. Um, 
a, a mixture that I think I want some more brown in. I don't think I like that. It's got too much of the blue and the Mars black. Put a little bit more of the brown in there. Now it's like a grayish brown color. I'm going to go and add that to the fur for the shadows. And I'm trying to do it while the white, the white is still uh, wet. So when you come and do this, it'll blend in. This is a little bit too light, I mean too dark. Make it lighter. Just blend in what's already there. I'm going to add white to it because it's Because if you look at the paint the, at the reference photo, it's got all this shadow right here. Some right here too. If I think it's too overpowering, you notice I'm putting white over top of it to blend it in. And you're probably like, that looks dirty. Well, yeah, it's, you know, fur is like that. It absorbs, if, especially if you're an animal, you have white fur, it absorbs, it's, you know, the color absorbs what, you know, what's around it. So. Okay, that's, that's looking better to me because I have to have, put a little bit right here. Add some white to it. some more of that color. When I'm getting the color, the dark color, I'm just barely putting it on the tip. That's all I'm doing. Okay, so, and then I'm going to get some of that white and I'm going to come over here and put some more white over here. making sure I'm remembering some of this uh, some of this pink color wipe off some of my paint on my my towel if I think that's too much of the pink mixture I'll just come over and get some more white Wipe off some of that paint. All right, but notice what's happening here. It had the paint. the The painting has more. Um, it has more substance to substance to it. If if you're doing a painting and it looks like you can see straight through and it looks like oh my, my goodness it doesn't have enough of color. That's because it doesn't have enough color. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some of that mixture we had, that's our underpainting color, and I'm going to put it under here. Sorry, got a little bit of white on it for some reason, which actually that's turning out to be in my benefit because I was just going to, um, that's actually what I wanted. I'm trying to get a color under here that's going to be light because we're going to start putting in the fur underneath the eyes that actually had pink in it. So I'm just going to, I want a little bit of pink. If I feel like I've got too much of my the light color, I can come put some dark under, under over top of it. Just coming to put the fur. I'm gonna put some of that right here too. In my original original paint, you can't really see this, but Cutie Pie has a little wrinkle right here. And I want to make sure you can see it in this one.
So what I'd probably do is I'd probably come get some Mars Black and put it right here so you can see the wrinkle. And guess what? If you can't see the dark color, what do you do, Tavia, when you can't see the dark color? You might have to put... Some highlights. Some highlights. Exactly. So that's what I'm getting ready to do. Put a little bit of highlight right there because I cannot see my wrinkle. That might be just a bit too much, but we'll make it work. Let's blend it in a little. And I need to actually put it on this side too. So you can actually see it from both sides. That that's a wrinkle. It comes all the way down. Put a little bit of highlight in there. That's too much. some white in a minute. Okay, so there's a wrinkle. Okay, so um, let me use some of this little pink mixture I have right here. I just want to put a little bit of highlight right here underneath his eye. But I don't want it so pronounced so I'm going to have to either blend it in or come back and redo it because I don't like that it's showing up so much. We'll come back to that in a minute. All right, so now we're going to um, add some white here and then we're gonna do the fur right here and then we're done. And then we feel like we need to add some more touch-ups, which I'm already can see right now, I need to put some white over here, which that's okay, because I was gonna move to the white anyway. I'm putting some and then I'm trying to dry brush it on here. Put some and then dry brush it. Dry brush it. Okay, and I'm gonna put some. All right, here we go. This is the part where this part and this part of here that we're going to do, it, it shows the most implications of fur. That's why you see me trying to go like in this kind of motion where it looks like fur because that's where you see most of it. Let me get some of this dark mixture right here and see if I can get some of that in there. I don't want that much paint. I'm just kind of dry brushing that in there. but that should be dark up here. I might come back and make that a little darker. Okay, I want more white in here. But we gotta get, I have to, okay. So here's the deal, with white, you've gotta pick up the colors that are around it. So you just can't have plain white. 
That's why you keep seeing me add other colors to the white. Okay. Right. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and come on over here and finish the fur and then go back and put some more of that red over there that I said I was going to do. All right. In order to show the highlights in this part of the fur, we're going to need some thalo green. But before we do that, since I have this um, grayish, brownish color, you know, let me put a little, little brown in there. Let me see if a little white will help. Because there's a, like a lighter color of brown over here for the fur. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that in there while I have it. Just kind of dry brushing it in there. I'm going to put some right here too where the wrinkle is. And cutie pie is starting to really come to life. Okay, so now I'm gonna get some thalo green. I need some thalo green. Thalo green is really strong. A lot of the thalos are really strong. I know that this thalo green is very strong. So I, I need to mute it down a little bit with some other colors. Let me get my... You know, actually, this is what I'm going to do. This is the time I'm going to introduce my um, going to introduce my half-inch angle brush. So I'm going to get some Thalo green. And some of this, um, let me put some, put some cat red in it. A little bit more cat red. Thalo green, cad red, put a little white. I'm, I'm going to put some burn umber because it's too strong for me. I don't like that it's that strong. So I, I had some thalo green, I added cad red and burn umber and some white. And this is going to be our green highlights on our fur. Can't say that I like that either. That's a little bit too bright. You see the thalo green, it's really bold. And I don't want that that much of bold boldness on um, my painting. Okay, I am going to rinse off this brush because I don't like all that paint on there. I could have rinsed it, wiped it off on my towel, but that was just way too much paint to me. Okay. So we're going to go through and try to put some of these highlights in there. So here I go. That's perfect. See, I wanted to give the hint of green but I didn't want it to be too bold. So it's kind of, the first kind of going like this. He's got some coming down, some of this green coming down on the side of him. I know that doesn't make sense, but you think about it, this original photo, if the dog was standing outside with the, um, in, in grass, he's picking up everything that is outside. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to um, I'm going to introduce another color. We we've used this before though, so it's not a surprise. If I have it out here, we're going to use it. If I don't, we won't use it. I do have it. I know myself well. Zinc white. Zinc white. I like to use zinc white when I don't want too much of a bold outcome when I use white so it just is a little bit more transparent and I just want to put a little bit over top of this green so you can see it because after all this is a highlight put some right here actually this fur is coming down this way wipe that off I'm going to put some of that zinc white over here too because I think I want a little bit of highlight up here. But what I love about this um, zinc white, like I said, it's not too bold. 
Or maybe I don't like that. I don't like it as color. It's blotted out. Now, as far as this, um, you might look at that and you might say that's a little bit too too bright. So I'm just going to make some of my under uh, under painting color, which is my usual Mars Black, Ultramarine Blue, and Burnt Umber. And I want to come back and put some more of that over top of it. Like I want to put it in here. Put some more over here. And definitely put some right here because I didn't need all that. Because we don't want our little dog, it's supposed to be a puppy, we don't want it to look like an old person. So, we will do it like that. some more of it in the ear because we're going to do our ears. I'm going to put some right here too because this is supposed to be a dark mark. And I love this angle brush. I don't know, when I very first started doing these tutorials, I told you I love the angle brush and um, because you can do all kinds of things with the angle brush. Put that like this. I just don't want to lose the effect of the fact that this is supposed to be a puppy. So I'm going to put some more of that color up here. Use a little bit of water just to make that stretch just a little bit. But I need it. Put some over here because I'm getting ready to put some yellow ochre right here for the inner part of the ear. <clears throat> if it seems like I'm contradicting myself, like I'll put a color and I'll go back over top of it with another color. As an artist, you're going to do that because you are trying to bring your painting to life and you it's it's all about layers that's I know I keep saying that but that's all that I can say okay I'm gonna put yellow ochre inside the ear, the ear over here because that's what's inside this ear is yellow ochre I'm gonna wipe off some of the paint and blend it in Now, like I said, my paintings, I'm, I'm trying to endeavor to keep them under two hours. So I want to give you the full, the, you know, obviously the full tutorial to help you become successful in, in, in producing a finished product. But even when I finish with this painting, sometimes I will go back and I'll add more to it. Like you can work on your painting forever and ever and ever. You just have to decide what is your stopping point because there has to be a stopping point. All right, so I'm gonna go back and put um, some, this particular ear over here, we had tried starting off with some, some red, and then we weren't, it wasn't showing up, so we need to go back and put some more. Might put a little bit of yellow on that. Cat, I'm putting some cat yellow in there to see if it'll, unless it's a little bit too bold. We want to get it to stand out. Yep, that did it. All right, because that's supposed to be a highlight on top of the red. And then we're going to come over here and put some more highlight on the inside of the ear. Do the and do the whisk do the whiskers and we can call this painting finished.
Okay, so I want to put, let's see, I just need to, where's my dark color? How about I do it in, from the inside? There we go. You don't ever want those harsh lines, and I don't like to see them. But I do want you to see that that's the inside of the ear. And then also, I'm going to get some of my zinc white and put some over here because it's supposed to be. And I'm still using my angle brush because there's supposed to be highlights right here to show even more fur. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm going to do my whiskers. Sorry, before I do that, I just want to put another little highlight. That's too much paint. Put another little highlight right here in the eye. And then make that one more pronounced. Okay, that's better. Okay, so to do the whiskers, I'm going to get some watered down um, titanium white. Let me move it over here. It looks like I contaminated it with my thalo, that dominating um, strong thalo green that I was telling you about. But I'm just going to put some whiskers in. And don't make them go in all the, all the same directions. Make some short, make some longer. Put some over here. The more fluid your painting your your paint is, the more that the, the whiskers will show up. Try not to keep them in the same direction. Trying to be I'm trying to be random. And hopefully I was successful in that. Okay, so I got that. <clears throat> okay. I feel like there's something. Okay, that makes me happy to have that there. I'm going to put a little bit more uh, white inside here. I'm just... Just one more thing and then we're done. Then I'm gonna sign it. Did we cover all our facts about the Frenchies, Octavia? We good? Or? I think we did too. I just wanna put a little bit more white over here. So look. And he is so cute. So cute, so cute. Okay, so now I'm gonna sign it. Or not. You know, it's so funny when I used to when I used to learn how to paint, I would watch my instructors do paintings and they would stop, say, Oh, we're done. And then they were like, Oh wait, hold on just a minute. And they're like, Oh yeah, I'm done. No, wait, hold on a minute. So now I get it. Because there's stuff that I think I still want to add on here. have to be able to see that cute little nose and it wasn't showing up for me so I'll put that here with some more black and then I'll highlight it so I can actually see where it is just put a little bit of a highlight on there and then blend it in and then I'm happy that I can see the nose because I wasn't able to see it now I'm just blending it in a little bit 
You know, a, a good thing about understanding um, depth in your painting, I, I really think that the, the art tutorial that I did, I'm going to put a little bit more in black and then some, some more highlight. The painting that I did on uh, hot and cold hands, I did a lot of, of dark and light blending. And I was sh trying to show you how when you add light to your dark, it makes your dark stand out better. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to, I'm putting, I'm putting black back on the nose and then I'm highlighting it with white and then I'm blending in the white. And the reason why I'm telling you all these things is because you might have a, I mean, I know that people love their animals and you might really, really love your, 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 your family dog and you might want to do a, a portrait of it one day and just, I hope that this has been helpful for you, that you feel inspired to go out and paint, um, paint your, your own dogs, your, your lovable family membered dog. Like I'm going to paint my sister's dogs for them. They, like I said, they have Queensland's and I'm going to be painting them soon. Okay, so I'm done. I'm going to sign it. And here I go, signing it. And sometimes I like to put the year, just so I can know when I did it. The year 2020. Okay, this is the end of our art tutorial on painting the French Bulldog painting cutie pie. I really, really hope you found this tutorial very beneficial. And if you did, if you can hit the like button, I would really appreciate it. Or if you can um, put your comments in the comments section, any suggestions you have, any interest that you have that, that you know I can focus on. And also I'm in the process of creating an art academy. I will keep you updated on that. Well, we will have a list of different types of things that you can paint, different lessons. And once again, I'm Katisha with Kitty Crow Creations. Remember to subscribe so that way you can be aware of all the forthcoming videos and also hit the notification button. And remember to explore your inner artist. Bye for now.